It all started in the 1950s with the prima donna extraordinaire Gorgeous George, adding a sense of grandeur, drama, and a whole lot of pomp and circumstance. Classical music and wrestling may seem like an unlikely combination, but when you really think about it, they actually have a lot in common. Woo! It's enough to make even the most civilized person want to don a spandex bodysuit and body slam their way to victory. With that being said, I'm Kevin, this is Wrestling Behind the Themes, and let's take a look at how classical music changed the world of wrestling themes forever. When it comes to wrestlers using classical music for their entrance theme, the Nature Boy Ric Flair was one of the earliest to incorporate it into his overall presentation. Now I never know how to pronounce this song title, so let's get an assist from Wikipedia. Also sprach Zarathustra. Come again? Also sprach Zarathustra. Ah, exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> Popularized in the Stanley Kubrick film 2001 A Space Odyssey, this opening Sunrise Fanfare has also been used by the BBC, Elvis Presley, and even Walla. But this classical piece of music will forever be synonymous with the nature boy. Ask any wrestling fan who's ever graduated from high school or college, and they'll tell you that it's impossible to not channel your inner macho man whenever you processed down the aisle to pomp and circumstance. A bombastic piece of classical music for an even more bombastic personality, Randy Savage had one of the grandest entrance songs ever. The music begins in such an epic way, ramping up the excitement until the main instrumentals kick in like a wrecking ball. Iconic and memorable, this theme was fit for a macho king and made the macho man an even bigger deal than he already was. The man of the hour, the man with the power, too sweet to be sour. Superstar Billy Graham left an indelible mark on the industry and on many different professional wrestlers who came after him. Brother. Not only was he a charismatic performer and capable of amazing promos, but he also had an outstanding physique, which set him apart from other performers of that time. Taking divine inspiration for his religious ring name, the reflection of perfection, stayed true to his faith by choosing this classical piece of symphonic rock music for his entrance. Written by Andrew Lloyd Webber as the title track from the popular rock opera Jesus Christ Superstar, this theme really helped make a star out of the superstar. Kurt Hennig's WWE gimmick of Mr. Perfect came quite naturally for the second generation star. A flawless technician inside the squared circle, Hennig did everything perfectly. As an arrogant heel or a confident babyface, Mr. Perfect was the best of the best in every aspect of his character, and he even had the perfect theme song. Hennig's WWE music was based on the theme of the 1960 movie Exodus, and with a little fine tuning thanks to WWF music director Jim Johnston, this composition is now one of the most epic theme songs of all all time. The booming drums and crashing cymbals throughout sound both gladiatorial and pretentious, which is really the perfect combination if you ask me. Of course, this list would not be complete without some real wrestling royalty. For over 40 years, Jerry the King Lawler has graced us with his presence, and for decades, the veteran Memphis Grappler has employed this majestical entrance theme throughout his WWE career. Suited for a true King of the Ring, when you first hear the regal horns in the Great Gate of Kiev, you realize that this is one of the great classical virtuoso compositions. With an air of smugness and superiority to it, this music will forever be linked with the WWE Hall of Famer and we shall proclaim for all to hear puppies puppies puppies. Prior to becoming the game, Triple H's original WWE gimmick was everyone's favorite snooty blue blood from the mean streets of Connecticut, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Now before Motorhead demanded that everyone bow down to the king, Trips would saunter down the aisle and curtsy ever so manly to perhaps the most triumphant piece of classical music ever written, strutting his snobbish stuff to the jubilant Ode to Joy by Ludwig von Beethoven, not Ludwig Borg. Written to celebrate the brotherhood and unity of mankind, it arguably achieved its goal in bringing the WWE Universe together to show their absolute hatred for Triple H. Known also as the intellectual savior of the masses, Damien Sandow's character had all the makings of becoming a top heel for the WWE. Your 
welcome. Believing that he was above the WWE universe, the Lord of Literacy was all elite before that term was even a thought in his former tag team partner's mind. And that's why using Handel's Hallelujah as his theme song suited his gimmick so well, as he made his entrance before verbally ripping his opponent to shreds using all sorts of hoity-toity, sophisticated words. But unfortunately, having this classical theme music didn't help the Duke of Decency succeed enough, much to the chagrin grin of his fan base. For a while, the WWE tried their darndest to categorize Daniel Bryan as a B-plus player, even though the best wrestler in the world was the hottest superstar in the industry. Furthermore, they thought that saddling DB with this piece of classical theme music would make him seem simply average compared to the rest of their roster. However, Wagner's Ride of the Valkyries is a kick-ass song and a hundred times cooler than all of the other generic butt rock themes at that time. Bryan was now armed with one of the most popular pieces of music in the classical repertoire, and the enduringly heroic theme helped him on his way to headline Yeselmania. In an era when wrestling entrance music is dominated by unremarkable anthems, Imperium, and more specifically, Gunther's theme song really slaps. Ushered to the ring by Dvorak's powerful Symphony No. 9, with all its dark and heavy undertones, this track chimes in as the second most intimidating piece of classical music on this list. Now I know that some of you are still bitter that the E changed Walter's name, and that only the intro to this symphony is used before Gunther's Prepare to Fight theme begins. But at least they actually had some sense to go ahead and drop the ring general's planned Nazi last name. One of the most distinctive entrance themes of any wrestler is The Undertaker's Graveyard Symphony. Rooted in the classics, this haunting dirge takes its inspiration from Frederick Chopin's somber funeral march, the bone-chilling foundation upon which every single version of Taker's theme was built. Jim Johnston's organ rendition took this classic beyond the grave and set the pace for the dead man's petrifying procession to the ring. And that's it for our list. Have any other classical themes we might have missed? Then let us know what they are in the comment section right down below. And don't forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. I've been Kevin from Wrestling Behind the Themes, and you stay classy, San Diego.